Hi, and welcome to the Norseman Endurance Science Seminar. My name is uh, Jürgen Mele, and I am the chief of the medical and safety crew here at uh, Norseman. I am also a PhD candidate in uh, cold water swimming, more on that uh, later. And as a start of this seminar, I want to tell you about how and why we do research on Norsemen, why we started it all. And uh, I also just want to mention briefly what my own research is about. So how did it all start? Well, in 2015, a few days before Norseman, we were standing at the shores of Eidfjord and we measured the water temperature and it was 10 degrees Celsius. And that is about 50 Fahrenheit. And in the medical crew, we were responsible for about 250 athletes and we didn't know for sure what to do. So as you all know, jumping from a ferry into the darkness 3,800 meters out in the fjord. So we really didn't uh, know what to do. Was this really safe? So with all the knowledge and experience we have from hypothermia, this was something completely different. There, at the time, there were not much research on cold water swimming, at least not with a wetsuit. Uh, so when I was working as an officer in the armed forces, one of our main rules was that you never put your men through anything you wouldn't do yourself. So there was an obvious next step to this. We had to do the swim. So a few days before race start, we swallowed temperature pills, pills that measure our core temperature, uh, kind of like a James Bond style. Uh, so we did feel a bit like James Bond actually. And uh, that was until we entered the water, <laughs> standing with water to our waists. We didn't feel much like James Bond. I remember saying to my swim buddy that day that this maybe wasn't a good idea. But we did the swim, 3,800 meters, uh, 10 degrees water uh, with a wetsuit and a normal swim cap. Uh, no neoprene socks, no neoprene hood, um, nothing like that. And as a result of that swim in 2015, as uh, many of you know, we did shorten the swim to half distance. Now, this was not a proper study. My swim partner that day was Johnny Hiestal, which you are going to meet later. He is uh, Norseman's assistant safety director but he is also a professor in physiology. So Johnny, he explained to me how a proper study on this should be done. And he suggested that I started the PhD with the cold water swimming as a team for my PhD. In the beginning, I first um, think that uh, starting a PhD, that was not a very good idea for me because at the time I was uh, doing this, working in the air ambulance as a rescue paramedic. Uh, this is a picture from, uh, from rescue training in very good weather, hanging 30 meters under a helicopter. That was my, that is my uh, background. Um, but anyway, due to a few, several lucky coincidences, I started my PhD a few months later. The first thing we did was to do a proper study. And we did that on how 3,800 meters swim in 10 degrees uh, water would affect the athletes. So we put one or two athletes in the water at the same time, and they were swimming constantly 3,800 meters. We had um, five paramedics and a medical doctor monitor, monitor them constantly, because we wanted to do this in a safe and controlled environment. Uh, so in our first study, this is not from a race, but from a controlled study in the, uh, in the open water outside Oslo. 
Uh, what did we do? We did the DEXA scan, that is a scan that measure your body fat and muscle mass and things like that. We did heart rate variability. We measured core temperature, skin temperature, VO2 max, and uh, oxygen level. Uh, the results from the first study is already published. Um, it was published last year, actually, in 2019. And by the way, you can find most of our relevant research uh, through the Norseman web pages at the research corner tab. But I want to tell you a few things about the first study. We did uh, have athletes swimming during three days. This is day one for athletes swimming. And the blue line is where the athletes are in the water and black line is after they have exited the water. And as you can see, one of the athletes got very cold, about 33 degrees Celsius. That's about 91 Fahrenheit. So we have to adjust the study because we cannot and will not force people into hypothermia. So the next uh, athletes that were coming to do our study did a 45 minute swim. And this is the uh, results from that. Uh, still, some of the athletes get very cold. And as you can see, um, some of them get, uh, have about 35 degrees core temperature. Uh, I want to highlight a few things. You can see that the drop in temperature is quite linear. And if you see the black lines when they are out of the water, you can also see that the temperature drops even when they are out of the water. And this is important. Uh, it's called the after drop. Uh, the outlets uh, are in T1 and out on their bikes when after drop occurs for several of them. So this is something we, we do uh, lots more uh, uh, attention to nowadays. Um, if we um, do some analysis and extrapolate the temperature lines, we can see that near 50% of the athletes had become hypothermic if we have done full distance swimming in 2015. So it's just a good thing that we shortened the swim in 2015. Well, we had to progress from this. Norseman gives uh, researchers a very good opportunity to investigate what happens to the body in the extreme environments. Uh, Norseman athletes are quite easy to do research on, uh, not because it's easy uh, that way, but because it, the race is very hard and the doing research is also very hard. But the athletes are very interested in participating in the, uh, in the research. Uh, that's probably because triathletes are known to be very keen on gadgets and numbers and stuff like that. So we made a research group. It grew every year with more and more projects. This is the 2016 team at Norseman, at least the ones that was, was available for this uh, picture. This is the research group in 2017. This is a group from 2018. And this is the group from 2019. And as you can see, more and more uh, researcher and exciting projects every year. And we now have several PhD in progress. Um, and we have several master projects, and we have also several international researchers that have joined our research group. And currently we are doing this. We are, or at least in 2019, we, we uh, uh, have been working on this things that is core temperature measurements with the pills I've just mentioned, and that's um, my main projects. Um, we do biochemical markers, uh, which um, uh, Christopher is going to tell you about later tonight. We measure lung function, which uh, Julia is going to tell you about uh, very soon. We measure HRV, heart rate variability. 
We do cardiac ultrasound. We do ultrasound of the blood vessel, and we also do some exciting research on omega-3, which Andreas is going to tell you about later tonight. So a short presentation of my own PhD. This is one of the instruments I'm using. Uh, this is the reader for the temperature pills that the athletes or the study subjects swallow. So I can read out the temperature uh, after, and it can look like this. This is not from Norseman. This is from an old race. Um, and uh, we, get, we get out um, uh, data like, like this after the race. And at Norseman, we actually have done 70 studies, or we have data collection from 70 athletes during the last three years. So we are soon, hopefully, presenting that in a paper. Um, this is how mainly how we conduct the research at the Norseman. We are testing the day before to get the baseline of the athletes, like you see there, pre-test the day before. And then we are testing at the finish line and the day after. So we can see how the different uh, um, things we are testing are changing from before to after the race. Um, some of you might wonder why it's uh, really necessary to wake the patient at 0, 0200 to, to start the testing, but I can assure you that every Norseman starter, uh, starter is awake at 0, 0200 because the race start is at 0, 0500 and uh, there is a lot of preparation before race starts at Norseman. This is a picture of the data collection the day before the race. Uh, we have a improvised lab that all the athletes in the study comes to and we do all the measurements. Uh, this is a picture from the swimming, uh, or sorry, at the, from the finish line. It's a little bit more hectic and crowded, but we managed to do some very good data collection here as well. Um, Another thing I want to highlight and that we have been interested in in our research team is the occurrence of swim-induced pulmonary edema. We have published a series of case reports uh, about athletes suffering from SIPE uh, at Norseman, and we get a lot of questions about this. This is something that is quite new to the sport, but similar cases has been known in the military diving community for, for, for several years. Uh, however, some military uh, groups are not that keen on sharing uh, for obvious reasons, but, uh, but now that uh, triathlon and swim runs and sports like this has uh, been more and more popular, uh, we know more and more about this. Um, so more and more athletes are experiencing SIPE and we don't know for sure what is happening. We know very well what a pulmonary edema is, but we don't know why it happens while we are swimming. So this is probably something we will do more research on in the future. In short, a um, pulmonary edema is uh, fluids from the blood that leaks uh, abnormally into fr from the small blood vessels around the lungs and into the air space uh, in the lungs. So it's a, it's a kind of like fluid some, that comes from the inside and into the lungs. What is important is to know the signs and symptoms of this. So if you have shortness of breath, like heavy breathing that is out of proportion to the activity you're doing, that's a, that's a vital sign. If you uh, are swimming with a uh, buddy, uh, mild symptoms of SIPE can be seen as uh, being a little out of shape, but you should still consider SIPE because uh, it can be very dangerous. Um, hearing a cough from a, from a swim buddy uh, may, may not be a reason for you to worry. 
because uh, many uh, many conditions have a cough as a sim symptom like asthma and yeah many things or you can uh, swallow some water but it's a good reason to check so by maybe simply asking hey are you okay and that can be enough to get a a hyper focused athlete uh, out of uh, his zone and then notice that something is wrong so the Important signs of Saipi is short, shortness of breath, uh, coughing, and sputum with a pinkish color. And with that, that is all I wanted to say for now. And thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the seminar. And do not, uh, do not uh, hesitate to contact me if there is any questions. Thank you. Thank you.